Hey everyone, today we're ranking the killers of Dead by Daylight from least to most evil. This is an update to a video I did a little over a year ago now, and quite a lot has changed since then. To rank the killers we have five tiers. Actually good, bad but possibly redeemable, irredeemable with some humanity, completely irredeemable, and evil incarnate. Let's get started. Starting out we have the actually good, or heavily manipulated slash forced. This is for all the killers who either did literally nothing inherently wrong, prior to their time in the realm, or were heavily manipulated or forced into the position they ended up in, that eventually landed them in the realm. Spirit is the closest to innocent when it comes to the killers. She's born into a cursed family, and has a father who is being directly manipulated by the entity, forcing him slowly into insanity. The closest we see to Rin's dark side is when she attacks her bullies, and the brief thought of killing them crosses her mind. However, she instantly dismisses it. Rin is murdered by her father after witnessing him killing her mother. Only in her final moments of life does she accept the entity's offer of revenge, transforming her into the spirit we see in-game. Artist is next up, and another killer character who hasn't actually killed anyone prior to the realm. She has a very tragic life, losing her mother, then younger brother, at a young age. Her father blaming her for this. She nearly takes her own life, but is saved by the presence of some crows, which seems to be the point the entity begins to interfere with her life. She becomes an artist, with crows often at the focus of her work. She makes striking political statements, which lands her in a bad spot, angering the cult, the Black Veil, who kidnap Kamina and her friends. She has her tongue cut out and hands off. Crows appear to save her from the cult, until they begin to also attack her friends killing them. Carmina feels responsible for the actions of the crows, and the entity takes her. Her story is tragic, and she really shouldn't have ended up as a killer, considering the person she was prior. The entity clearly had a large part in manipulating her life, causing situations of extreme emotion. Hag, I would say, is marginally more accountable for her own downfall, due to her constant meddling with the dangerous hexes. She is by no means bad, though. After using the hexes to get ahead in school, Lisa is walking through the woods and slips and falls during a storm. She is captured by cannibals and kept in the Grim Pantry. She is tortured by the cannibal village, and in her dying moments she scratches a symbol into the mud of the swamp. The entity answers her, giving her renewed strength which allows her to slaughter the village of cannibals, taking her revenge. Her use of the hexes and her calling upon the entity definitely makes her more accountable, but still definitely not responsible for her own downfall. Plague is a greatly manipulated character from ancient Babylon. She becomes convinced the entity is her god. She loses her faith and plans to leave the city of Babylon, then the entity whispers. She takes it as a sign, and murders her barn, her mentor and father figure, solidifying her faith. She later becomes High Priestess and is greatly loved by the people for her devotion to them. She does all she can to stop the plague that spreads into Babylon, even sacrificing herself, begging in her dying moments for her god to save her people. Adiris is a greatly misguided character, and despite the hurt she does cause, it's clear that her intentions at heart are good, and she is truly devoted to her people. Twins are another two characters who aren't really at fault for their killing. From birth they are hunted, simply for being conjoined, believed to be the product of witchcraft. Their mother is burned, then Victor dies quite young, and Charlotte is forced to kill as she flees from those who seek to kill her, one of these groups being the Black Veil. Only in her dying moments does Charlotte enter the realm, tempted by the entity who resurrects Victor. Wraith is a killer purely through circumstance. He is put through many tragedies during the Nigerian Civil War. His parents are killed, his grandparents, and then his adoptive mother figure, Fenanya, all when he is just a boy. The entity seems to interfere with him at this point, driving him to kill the soldiers who killed Fenanya. When he's a man and moves to the US, he murders his boss Azarov. After he discovers that he has crushed hundreds of people at Autohaven Wreckers, unknowingly providing a body disappearing service, his story is one of tragedy 
haunted by the entity's presence. Wraith's humanity can be seen in his warning bell before uncloaking. There's definitely more of a grey area with Philip, but he has very extreme circumstances. Moving on to the bad, but possibly redeemable. This is for characters who are by and large bad, but do have redeeming qualities, and are even possibly redeemable in their current state, despite the bad they've done. First up we have Demogorgon. This may be a strange spot, but from what we can tell about the Demogorgon in Stranger Things, they seem very much under the control of the Mind Flayer, or possibly Vecna. They've been forced into their armies to serve them. We see that when a Demogorgon is brought up under the care of Dustin, it is capable of acting differently, and refraining from just killing things. Despite the demo's anatomy being built for destruction, it appears it could be redeemed, or at least not used for the purpose of world domination, left alternately to simply roam in the upside down, if it were not controlled by a greater power. Susie and Joey of the Legion are two characters that are greatly influenced by the other two Legion members, Frank and Julie. They aren't innocent though, and do participate in the murder of an innocent store clerk, which they could have chosen to resist. They clearly regret it, and are in a vulnerable spot, being younger than the other two members, seemingly influenced by them, and definitely scared of them to some degree. Trapper I think is most definitely bad, but he's often considered one of the more human beneath all the hooks and bones. He's initially introduced as a caring and artistic boy, who makes friends with his father's abused workers, attempting to help them. It's only through both his father's manipulation and the entities that Evan appears to change. He always has an inner darkness, but it's largely nurtured as a result of these two very negative influences and the betrayals that occur throughout his story. Evan is clearly internally struggling as the monster he has become all the way up to the realm, where we know him to be one of few killers to fight back against the entity. Cannibal is a character who is definitely bad, he's a cannibal, and he is responsible for killing people. However, he is clearly confused about what he's really doing, and he's greatly manipulated by his family. He is fearful of them, but also desires to protect them, and seems to serve the entity only because he fears it also. He's possibly redeemable as a character, in the sense that he could be shifted from his killing ways but he is still undeniably bad for what he's already done. Pig is a character who is also bad for the things she's done, aiding Jigsaw or entrapping people in a variety of twisted games, and later setting up her own games that are impossible to complete. She is greatly misguided by Jigsaw, after being in quite a vulnerable situation with her drug addiction. I think there is still clear humanity, and there could have been redemption had she not died, so I'm going to put her here. Deathslinger is a character that does need to be looked at slightly differently, I think, with the more lawless times his story occurs in. With that said, he does still totally kill a bunch of people, and creates cruel implements to do so. Caleb has his invention stolen, and ends up in prison after he attacks the guy that stole them. He then works for the prison warden, retrieving criminals to place them into prison. He's not exactly moral, but there is clearly humanity within him still, and at the end of his story after killing the warden, he seems to be upset with what he's become, remembering his tools, and likely reflecting on how things could have gone differently. Onto the irredeemable with some humanity tier. Frank and Julie of the Legion are going to start us off here. These two are obsessed with serial killers, and love the idea of becoming killers too. They don't appear to show remorse after murdering a store clerk, and even encourage the other impressionable members of the Legion to take part in the murder. They're obsessed with chaos and violence, and are driven by one another. Some of the most human looking killers, but not all too much humanity within, I don't think. Hillbilly is a character I consider irredeemable in his current state. The unfortunate truth of Billy is that the horrors of his abusive upbringing permanently and irreversibly changed him. His parents kept him locked away, forced him to kill cattle, and he was subject to physical and emotional abuse abuse. What humanity does remain in him appears to leave once he murders his mother. He becomes the monster that his parents saw him as, taking pleasure in killing and brutality. Onryo is quite a tough one to judge. She's chucked down a well after there is fear surrounding her powers. She's then left to die down in the well, and later curses a tape when a resort is built over it. She has some remaining humanity, I think. Unfortunately, there's just no going back really at this point. She causes the deaths of lots of innocent people, with anyone who watches the tape eventually dying. The entity takes her into the realm after it saves her from the well. She didn't deserve death, but the amount she causes is also quite a bit, and in quite a horrific way. 
There's humanity in there somewhere though, I think. Blight has always been a character I've struggled to judge, to be honest. When Talbot produces his serum, he causes many people to die, but it doesn't appear to be an effect he was expecting, shocked at the sight of the mass grave that he has filled. Once he is saved, he becomes obsessed with discovering a new realm, and he goes kinda crazy. He never seems to intend to cause harm, but he definitely does throughout his many experiments. Closer to the end of his story though, he's mainly just destroying his own body and mind with the serum. His story is confusing. I think in just his current state, he's probably irredeemable though. Huntress is someone who has done enough horrible things to consider her irredeemable to me, but she does clearly still have inner humanity in the way she tries to care for the girls she captures. She isn't very good at it, but it's clear there's some messed up element of care there. A likely connection to her own raising alone in the woods after losing her mother. On the higher end here for sure though, as the general rule for Huntress is that she kills anything she sees and is known for raiding villages, slaughtering everyone aside the girls. A killer created more so through circumstance though, like some of the others here. Nurse is another really tough character who has a bunch of contradicting lore. I think she is irredeemable, purely for the amount of people she kills, and the fact she seems to specifically kill the mentally ill of Crotus Pren, viewing them as undeserving of life after her own husband dies in a logging accident. Sally is manipulated though, seemingly by both the entity and the broken woman, a patient at Crotus Pren Asylum. She also experiences decades of abuse there, her own mental state slowly being whittled down. Before her snap, we clearly see there is humanity remaining, and even in the realm, her mori suggests a certain sadness in what she has become. Oni is on the very edge of this tier, and honestly, it's really pushing it placing him here, due to his kill count, which likely reaches the thousands, which is hard to see any humanity in. Oni's desire to protect his family's legacy, and his clear remorse and pain he feels when he discovers he's murdered his father, is clearly real. However, still murdered thousands for what was basically a selfish goal, and killed anyone who challenged or crossed his path, and also the whole eternally cursing his family thing, so not the best. Alright, onto completely irredeemable. These are the characters who are just horrible, despicable people. Nemesis is going to be first here. As a programmed bioweapon, it's debatable how much control he really has over his own actions. He is built for destruction, with the initial goal to kill all members of STARS. In Resident Evil 3, we see clear humanity seep through, despite his monstrous physical state. He clearly has his own thoughts alongside his programmed ones. He plays around with Jill, taunting her, and appears to take pleasure in causing pain, showing he is more than just a biological machine. Executioner is an odd one. As the embodiment of James Sunderland's guilt and desire for punishment, he's not really a physical being, and not necessarily evil in the sense we might view. He's kind of just been created, and now he's just doing his thing. I wouldn't necessarily call him evil, but he's not good. He's more neutral in the sense he appears to have no emotional stake in things. His job is to make people face up to their guilt. Still an immortal punisher regardless of his motives, so I would say completely irredeemable. And I would call that evil. Depending on how you view it though, you could say he's like neutral I suppose. Again, it really depends how you view his character. Clown is a character that also had a tragic upbringing to an abusive father. However, he clearly shows psychopathic tendencies from a young age, which only develop as he grows older first killing birds and taking their feathers, with his final choice of trophy being human fingers, which he picks based on taste. He shows no desire to change, and throws himself into drugs and alcohol, constantly on the run as a result of his sloppiness. Yeah, this guy's just evil. Ghostface is a famed serial killer, known for his meticulous killing. He is one of few characters who happily embraces the entity and its realm showing his twisted desires. We can even see the joy in game that he derives by looking at things such as his Mori, and the way he chuckles to himself in the menus. Danny Johnson killed many, writing about his own deeds, bragging about them in the local paper, and building up a reputation as the Ghostface Killer. He's a bad dude. Trickster is a character I consider completely irredeemable, as he never really shows remorse of any kind, and does some of the most twisted things to his victims specifically choosing to torture them, using their screams for his music, and taking pleasure from these sounds. He's proven as reckless, and even when there is a high chance he'd be caught, 
He persists in killing his victim, truly showing where his priorities lie. Doctor is the most human character that can be named evil. He has no care for human life, and does horrible experiments on live human subjects. He gets free reign of patients in Larry's, developing experimental interrogation methods, but for the most part just doing what he pleases and causing a lot of pain as he does. He's horrible. Go watch his tome cutscenes if you want a good visual idea of how messed up this guy is. Truly horrible stuff. Mastermind or Albert Wesker is completely irredeemable to be honest. He's a big fan of world domination. He originally worked for Umbrella, who are pretty evil as is, but he eventually splits away from them to be even worse, because he's like that. He tries to enact a plan where he can wipe out a bunch of people with Ouroboros, leaving only those he views as strong. When Chris and some others try and stop him, he exposes himself to Ouroboros before entering the realm. Crazy, world domination, bioweapon man, not good. Cenobite is a demon, so bad start. There's a degree of tragedy in how he became a demon after seeing the horrors of war. Still, once he is a demon, he embraces the ideas of pleasure and pain, and happily tortures anyone who opens the box in really grotesque ways, dragging them to the labyrinth. He deceives people as he pleases, and in general just isn't the nicest guy. As the leader of the Cenobites, he's also the worst of the bunch too. His human identity is long gone at this point consumed after he becomes a Cenobite. Nightmare is one of the worst characters, and evil is a suitable word for him. His abuse of children is horrific, and that's only furthered when he later haunts their dreams as adults, finally killing them. There's nothing redeeming about Freddy, a vengeful dream demon whose sole purpose is to terrify his victims. Finally, we have the evil incarnate tier. There are two characters in the game which are essentially just the embodiment of evil, these two being Michael Myers, the shape, and the Druani, or as we know it, the Dredge. These two are indisputable evil, with no redeeming qualities, and the sole desire to spread pain. Not necessarily even a desire, it's more just something they are inherently compelled to do. If I were to place one over the other, I would say the Dredge is the greater evil of the two, mainly because Myers was once a regular physical human, only appearing to change on Halloween night 1963. The Dredge is the manifestation of the dark thoughts of many humans. It's all-consuming, with human and animal body parts making up its anatomy. It's capable of consuming the very light around it with its presence. On the other hand, Myers is stated to be purely and simply evil. His blank mask and unstoppable nature makes him equally terrifying. I personally think as the dredge is the manifestation of dark thoughts, it's the greater evil of the two. A corrupt mass that seeks evil and consumes it, where Myers simply kills stuff. Again, I totally understand the argument for Myers though. Well, that's gonna do it. I do hope you enjoyed, and be sure to drop your own thoughts or rankings down below. Thanks, and goodbye.